My partner, 32-year-old male, and I, 30-year-old female, met in 2011 at university. We kissed for the first time and started a relationship in 2012. It was beautiful, so, so beautiful. We were two inseparable lovebirds. The amazing memories from those years will last me a lifetime. In 2015, we started facing challenges in our communication. We failed to resolve them and ultimately broke up reconciled twice between 2015 and 2018. During the breakup, we tried to live our lives, forget each other, meet other people. She even moved to another country and had a great time there. We had minimal communication while broken up, sharing only major milestones like graduation or the random message when she got a tattoo, etc. Eventually, she moved back to the same country. We started talking again and agreed that we would fight to make our relationship work. We worked out our issues. Since 2018, we've been learning and growing together. We've had arguments, especially when adjusting to living together. Things are still not perfect, but I was convinced they are good until last weekend. My girlfriend visited her sister, 35-year-old female, and the husband and their two daughters. When she came back, she wasn't in a good mood. She started picking a fight with me about dishes, laundry, and other small things. I was shocked. We didn't see each other for a weekend. And this is the hello I got. I had actually done three loads of laundry that weekend. I cleaned her lunch boxes and pots from the previous week that had started developing mold. The fight was very unreasonable. Ultimately, she told me that she was doubting, confused about our relationship. I'm thinking, WTF. It's not the first time we fight after she talks to her sister. So I dug and she eventually told me that in-laws wanted her to reflect on breaking up with me. It went far. They offered her a place to stay if she would need a few months to process the breakup. I became more confused the more details I learned. At family events, they are always friendly. When I got the impression that they don't like me, my partner assured me that they all thought I'm a great guy. Well, it's now clear that although I'm a great guy, just not the right guy for their little sister. I've known this woman much longer than the sister has known her husband. The arguments they made are along the lines of, I'm holding her back from her dreams. I have no direction in life, cultural differences. A suggestion was made, not sure if by my girlfriend or them, that I may be manipulating her. As a result, I find it hard to discuss with her now because will she just say I'm manipulating her when I share my views? According to my girlfriend, they reiterated that I'm a nice person, just not the person for her. Part of it could be financial. I'm not close to having enough savings to purchase a house, which I know is her dream, it's mine too. I'm just not there yet. Anyway, we're meeting later today, all four of us. I don't trust them anymore. I don't feel comfortable with my partner visiting them. I don't wanna visit them either. I don't think I even wanna to talk to them at family events anymore. I feel angry, disgusted, humiliated, and stabbed in the back. I have so many questions. Who else did they talk to? Other siblings, the parents, how long have they been thinking this? Is my girlfriend telling me the full truth or is she protecting her family by withholding certain information? She's done this in the past. It's a mess. Some other context. My partner has been feeling low energy for a while and recently shared with her sister that she sometimes has suicidal thoughts. My partner and all her family are white, European Union. I am black, non-European Union. Their native language is my fifth language. I speak relatively well, although I am uncomfortable in a family context with fast-paced group conversations. I am usually quiet during family gatherings unless I have a one-on-one -on -one conversation. I am currently not working. I'm receiving unemployment benefits, which isn't much money, but enough to cover my basic expenses. Girlfriend is doing quite well financially. I'm not actively looking for a job, but rather completing a seven-month full-time data science boot camp, accredited by the government, working on real use cases with real companies, career coaching, etc. So I'm confident in securing a job in the coming months when the training is complete. Girlfriend's sister recently had kids and has shared her desire for girlfriend to start having kids too. So their kids can grow up together. I want to wait with kids until I secure a job after my training and have better financial circumstances. When we got back together after 2018, we decided to move in together. 
and I applied for a family reunion through my girlfriend. Better possibilities for me in terms of access to the job market. I have lived in the European Union for 18 years, but have no nationality. The situation now. My partner says that she's 99% sure about us. I can live with the 1% doubt, Lowell. Partner is willing to go low contact with sister, but I feel bad because she loves her nieces. And actually three weeks ago, her and her sister had a heart to heart where they both cried and reaffirmed their sibling love for each other. We are having a call to discuss how to move forward with our relationship, all four of us. Honestly, I don't know how to approach the conversation. How would you do it? What would you ask? What would you want to have as an outcome? Is this talk even healthy, necessary? The truth is, if I could, I would never talk to them again. I miss nothing in my life by avoiding them. But how do I ensure that I don't push my girlfriend from her family and create more resentment either towards me or the sister? If you read this far, I appreciate it and happy to hear your thoughts. Now for a few comments before the update. Comment one, what this probably looks like from your sister-in-law's point of view, you and your partner had three good years followed by nine years of multiple breakups and continuing arguments. You are not working and are still in the process of trying to acquire marketable job skills at 32 years old. You are not moving forward toward having kids. Your partner has suicidal thoughts. All of this does not necessarily add up to this is a bad relationship and your partner should leave. But do you not get why it seems that way to your sister-in-law? I think you have to live with her doubts at this point. She is trying to look out for her sister. She cannot see inside your head or know the future. And what she can see makes it reasonable for her to be worried. Comment two, being 32 years old and not having a stable job yet is likely the reason. I understand you are working at it, but that is only a seven month course. What have you been doing for the other 10 years of your adult life? If you have not previously shown much drive to advance your career, they likely do not believe this seven month course will amount to anything, just like all of your other plans over the last decade. You automatically assume the sister-in-law is making unfounded negative comments. But is it possible she is seeing red flags you do not see in yourself? Be open to the fact that maybe you do need to make some changes. But if it turns out that their complaints are ridiculous, do not be afraid to tell them to back off. Now, for the update, thank you for all the comments from the last post. So, the meeting with my girlfriend, her sister, and her brother-in-law happened. It was tense from the start. Her sister started by saying they were just looking out for her best interests, which I get, but it felt like an ambush. They kept bringing up how they thought I was holding her back, and it was clear they had been discussing this for a while. I tried to stay calm and explain my side, but it felt like they had already made up their minds. My girlfriend was quiet for most of the conversation, which was frustrating. I wanted her to defend us, to show them that we were strong together, but she seemed torn. At one point, her sister mentioned the idea of my girlfriend moving in with them for a while to clear her head. That hit me hard. I felt like they were trying to pull her away from me, and it made me question everything. After the meeting, my girlfriend and I had a long talk. She admitted that she felt pressured by her family, but also confessed that she had been having doubts about our future. She said she loved me, but was scared about our financial situation and the cultural differences. It was a tough conversation, but it was honest. We decided to take a break for a week to think things over. During that week, I focused on my data science bootcamp and tried to clear my head. I realized how much I loved her and wanted to make things work but I also knew I couldn't force her to stay if she wasn't sure. I reached out to a few friends for advice, and they all said the same thing. I needed to be honest with her about my feelings and my plans for the future. When we finally sat down to talk again, I told her how much she meant to me and how I was committed to building a future together. I explained my plans for finding a job after the boot camp and how I wanted to support her dreams as well. She listened and I could see she was conflicted she said she needed more time to think, and I agreed to give her space. A few days later, she came back to me and said she wanted to try to make things work. She apologized for letting her family's opinions get in the way and promised to set boundaries with them. We decided to go to couples therapy to work on our communication and to make sure we were both on the same page about our future. The therapy sessions were eye-opening. We learned a lot about each other and how to communicate better. It wasn't easy, but it felt like we were making progress. 
We also decided to set some goals for our future, like saving for a house and planning for kids once we were both in a better financial situation. However, things took a turn when my girlfriend's sister found out about our therapy sessions. She called my girlfriend and accused her of wasting time and money on a relationship that was doomed to fail. This caused another fight between us, and I felt like we were back to square one. My girlfriend was torn between her love for me and her loyalty to her family. I decided to take a step back and give her some space to figure things out. I focused on my boot camp and started applying for jobs. I knew that securing a job would help alleviate some of the financial stress and show her that I was serious about our future. It was a tough few weeks, but I finally got a job offer from a tech company. I was over the moon and couldn't wait to share the news with her. When I told her, she was genuinely happy for me. It felt like a weight had been lifted off our shoulders. We celebrated that night and talked about our future plans. It felt like we were finally on the same page. However, I knew that her family's opinions would still be a challenge. We decided to have another meeting with her sister and brother-in-law to share the news about my job and to set some boundaries. This time, we were more prepared. We explained our plans and how we were working on our relationship. Her sister was still skeptical, but she agreed to back off and give us some space. As for my girlfriend, she'd started to see a therapist on her own to work through her feelings and to set boundaries with her family. It was a slow process, but it felt like we were making progress. We also started spending more time together, doing things we both enjoyed, and it felt like we were reconnecting. Looking back, I realized that a lot of our issues stemmed from not communicating properly and letting outside opinions affect our relationship. We still have a long way to go, but it feels like we're on the right track. I know that her family will always have their opinions, but as long as we stay strong together, we can make it through anything. Thank you for reading. Re Am I the idiot for telling my husband? His insecurities are ruining our marriage. I, 22-year-old female, have been married to my husband, 28-year-old male, for a little more than half a year. Everything is great and I'm really happy and feel loved. But this one thing is causing some strain in our relationship. My husband has been really insecure about his genitalia, especially its size. He told me that he had some issues with his past partners because of it, apparently. Some even broke up with him for that. Who breaks up with someone for a reason like that? I guess unlucky for them and lucky for me because I ended up with him. He also revealed that these experiences made him really insecure and he worries that I secretly think it's too small or that he is not performing well or satisfying me. So I have repeatedly told him that I am happy with him and feel satisfied. I even told him that I was shocked when we first got together because his genitalia was bigger than I thought. I never had previous partners before him because I was saving myself for marriage and had never seen male genitalia before, but even though I keep assuring him that I am happy, satisfied, and don't think it's small, he keeps insisting that I only think that because I've never seen or been with others. I think he's being a little unfair because I feel like he is discrediting and invalidating what I am telling him just because of my lack of experience. He keeps saying that I think that way because I don't really know what it feels like to be satisfied. But that's also nonsense because even if what he's saying is true, it doesn't matter because I'm with him and I'm not going to be with someone else. I've been wanting to engage in intimacy activity more often because I love him, because I want to be with him, and because we are newly married and everything is new to me. I am enjoying it all. However, somehow he interprets this as evidence that I'm not satisfied and wanting to do more because of that. I keep telling him that's not the case and I want to do more because I want to be with him more. But he keeps insisting that I think that way because I'm too nice, but my subconscious and body want to do more because I am subconsciously unsatisfied. So I don't know what to do. It feels like he has made up his mind and concluded that he is small and cannot satisfy me. It almost feels like he wants me to confirm his belief by saying I'm not satisfied. I feel like I'm being unfairly punished by his own beliefs and insecurities. And no matter what I say or feel, it won't matter. He keeps apologizing afterwards, saying he will try to last at least five minutes next time. He wishes his genitalia was a couple inches bigger to be at least average. Or he's sorry because we can't try other positions due to his size, which I didn't even know if they existed.
He keeps telling me that he feels bad because he thinks I deserve someone much better or should experience how good it can be because I've had and will have so many men lined up to be with me. But I don't understand why he thinks that way when I chose him, want to be with him, and constantly tell him that I am satisfied with him. All of these issues have been causing strain, and they are making the intimacy act itself a little less enjoyable because I'm constantly worried about his feelings. I'm afraid to bring this up because he will probably say, it's not fun because of me, and connect it to his insecurities again. So I don't know what to do. What do I do? Now for a few comments before the update. Comment one, he needs therapy because all of this is very unhealthy and manipulative. If he doesn't go to therapy, you will eventually get tired of his crying and you will divorce him. He needs to fix it before it's too late. Comment two, his insecurity is not your problem. Is tell him he needs therapy. This is gonna weigh down on your relationship for the rest of your lives if he doesn't sort it out. You can't fix this for him by reassuring him. Now for the update. Hey everyone, a lot has happened since my last post. Two weeks ago, my husband and I decided to take a short trip to a nearby town to get away from everything and spend some quality time together. I thought it would be a good way to reconnect and maybe help him feel more secure. The first few days were great. We went hiking, had some nice dinners, and just enjoyed each other's company. But then, things took a turn. One evening, we were having dinner at a cozy little restaurant when he suddenly brought up the topic of his insecurities again. He mentioned that he had been researching ways to fix his problem and found a clinic that offers a procedure to increase size. I was taken aback and told him that he didn't need to do anything like that, but he seemed pretty set on the idea. He said he had already booked a consultation for the following week. I tried to talk him out of it, explaining that I loved him just the way he was and that this procedure wasn't necessary but he insisted that it was something he needed to do for himself and for our relationship. I felt a mix of frustration and sadness because it seemed like no matter what I said, he couldn't see how much I loved and appreciated him. The consultation day came and he went to the clinic. When he came back, he seemed more determined than ever. The doctor had told him that the procedure was safe and effective, and he was convinced that this was the solution to all our problems. I felt a sinking feeling in my stomach, but I didn't want to argue with him anymore. I just hoped that maybe this would finally give him the confidence he needed. A few days later, he went through with the procedure. The recovery was tough, and he was in a lot of pain. I tried to be there for him as much as possible, but it was hard to see him like that. He was irritable and short-tempered, and I felt like I was walking on eggshells around him. I kept telling myself that things would get better once he healed, but deep down I was worried. As the days went by, his mood didn't improve much. He was still insecure and constantly asking me if I noticed any difference. I tried to reassure him, but it felt like nothing I said made any impact. One night, he broke down and admitted that he regretted going through with the procedure. He said he felt like he had made a huge mistake and that he was even more insecure now than before. This revelation hit me hard. I felt a mix of anger and sadness because I had tried so hard to convince him that he didn't need to do this but I also felt guilty, wondering if there was something more I could have done to prevent it. Our relationship was strained, and it felt like we were drifting further apart. The fallout from the procedure didn't just affect our emotional connection. It also impacted our physical relationship. He was hesitant to be intimate, and when we did try, it was awkward and uncomfortable. He kept apologizing, saying he was still in pain and that he was worried about hurting me. I tried to be patient and understanding, but it was hard not to feel rejected. In the midst of all this, I started to reflect on our past and how we got to this point. I remembered how he had always been a bit insecure, even before we got married. He had mentioned a few times that his ex-girlfriends had made comments about his size, and I could see how those experiences had shaped his self-esteem. But I had never realized just how deeply those insecurities ran. I also thought about my own upbringing and how I had been taught to save myself for marriage. I had always believed that love and emotional connection were more important than physical attributes, and I had tried to convey that to him, but it seemed like my lack of experience had only fueled his doubts. One night as we were lying in bed, he opened up about his childhood. He told me about how he had always felt inadequate, even as a kid. He had been bullied in school, 
and had never felt like he measured up to other boys. Hearing this broke my heart, and I realized that his insecurities were deeply rooted and not something that could be easily fixed. Despite everything, I still loved him and wanted to make our marriage work. But I knew that we couldn't keep going on like this. I suggested that we see a therapist together, hoping that a professional could help us navigate these issues. He was hesitant at first, but eventually agreed. We started seeing a therapist, and it was a tough process. The sessions were emotionally draining, and there were times when I felt like we were making no progress. But slowly, we began to uncover some of the underlying issues that had been affecting our relationship. The therapist helped us communicate better and understand each other's perspectives. However, just when I thought we were starting to make some headway, things took another turn for the worse. My husband lost his job. He had been struggling at work for a while, and the stress of everything going on in our personal life had taken a toll on his performance. Losing his job was a huge blow to his self-esteem, and it felt like we were back to square one. The financial strain added another layer of stress to our already fragile relationship. We had to cut back on expenses and put some of our plans on hold. My husband became even more withdrawn, and it felt like he was shutting me out completely. I tried to be supportive, but it was hard not to feel overwhelmed by everything that was happening. In the midst of all this chaos, I started to question my own feelings and whether I could continue to handle the strain. I loved my husband, but I was exhausted and felt like I was constantly walking on eggshells. I wondered if things would ever get better or if we were just prolonging the inevitable, so that's where we are now. We're still seeing the therapist and I'm trying to stay hopeful, but it's been really tough. I don't know what the future holds, but I'm doing my best to take things one day at a time. Thanks for reading. Am I the idiot for cutting off? My emotionally neglectful mother after she guilt tripped me about wedding expenses. I've been with my wife for three and a half years, married for almost two months. I have had a strained relationship with my family for most of my life. So my whole life and all of the shitty situations have led me to this point. My mother was emotionally neglectful to me after the death of my grandfather, and my father was basically absent. The main relevant context you will need is that in 2021, I purchased a condo with assistance from my mother. Ever since I received her assistance, she made it a point to tell me every chance she got that I owe her money. I sold the condo in 2022 and immediately paid her. This is a very short way of saying that she likes to constantly hold things over my head. This year, I got married to my wife, the love of my life. Leading up to the wedding, my mother paid for our rehearsal dinner and honeymoon, along with help from some of my other family. My wife and I are the ones who paid for the main wedding event, venue, catering, DJ, photographer, etc. After the wedding, we sent out very generic thank you cards that had a photo featured on the card with a thank you note on the back of it for people who came to the wedding. My mother asked to meet with me tonight for dinner, which at the end of the dinner, she explained that she felt as though she was unappreciated for all of the things she has done for me and my wife leading up to the wedding. I genuinely had no clue she felt this way. But for some reason in the moment, I felt pure rage. I don't know why. I almost felt as though I was backed into a corner, that she will just continue to hold shoot over my head for the rest of my life. After speaking with my wife, I no longer felt rage at all. Far from it, I just felt guilt and depression. Guilt for the fact that my mother is entitled to feel the way she feels. And in a sense, she may be right. I feel as though I did not show her enough appreciation for the fact that she did those things for me. As all I have felt for her most of my life is contempt due to her actions, as well as lack of action towards me. Depression that I feel as though anything I do will never be enough. On the other hand, I feel as though I'm entitled to feel the way I do. I have felt slighted my whole life and have had to live with a shadow draping over me because of everything she holds over my head. I am a person that will show appreciation in person. I do not like thank you cards. I will thank you in person and let you know my genuine feelings and appreciation to your face. I feel as if thank you cards are a bit tacky but I know there are people who genuinely like those sorts of things. Where do I go from here? I've apologized to my mother as I understand how she feels and she is valid to have those feelings. But I know for a fact that nothing I will ever do will be enough for her. Do I just cut her off?
Do I ignore and move on? How do you think I should move forward with this? To add, for those saying that the generic thank you card just wasn't enough. What about my appreciation towards her for helping me out with the condo? Another one I paid her back as soon as I could because of her persistence. There are plenty more instances of this which I will not include in this post. But why does someone who has held things over my head for my entire life deserve more of a thank you card than everyone else? Why is it that a personal in-person thank you isn't enough? If I sound annoyed, it's because I am. Now, for a few comments before the update. Comment one. Okay, I am going to stop you right now. I am a mother and your mother is wrong, period. I am sorry to be so blunt. Your mother wants all the attention and she is jealous. You didn't say if your mother goes to church, but the Bible is clear. Your mother will not be happy no matter what. Why give to your kids if you hold it against them? Most parents I know, when we do something for our kids, we do not expect it back. I am sorry for how your mother treats you. It breaks my heart. Your mother is a very unhappy person and you need to pray for her. In fact, you need to tell her she needs to ask God to help her be happy. You need to pray for her. You are not the problem. She needs help. Comment 2. I think you're carrying so much baggage from the past that you can't see things clearly. Your mother is self-centered and controlling. Stop accepting money, gifts, assistance, etc. from her. More importantly, stop expecting her to be anything other than what she's always been. Set boundaries, stick to them, go no contact if you need to. You can't be healed by those who hurt you. Your mom is part of the problem, not the solution. Don't look to her for comfort, acceptance, or praise. That's not who she is. Now for the update. Hey everyone, thanks for reading. After that dinner with my mom, things took a turn I didn't expect. The next day, she called me and said she wanted to have a family meeting at her house. My wife and I reluctantly agreed to go, thinking it might be a chance to clear the air. When we got there, it was clear she had invited not just us, but also my sister and her husband. My mom started off by saying she felt unappreciated and that she wanted to discuss how we could all be more supportive of each other. It felt like an ambush. My sister chimed in, saying she felt the same way about not being appreciated enough. I was stunned. I had no idea she felt this way too. My wife tried to mediate, but it quickly turned into a blame game. My mom brought up the condo again, saying that even though I paid her back, she felt I didn't show enough gratitude. My sister mentioned how she felt left out during the wedding planning. It was overwhelming. I felt cornered and defensive. I tried to explain that I do appreciate them, but I show it in my own way. My mom dismissed it, saying that a thank you card is the bare minimum and that actions speak louder than words. My wife tried to support me, but it was clear that my mom and sister had already made up their minds about how they felt. After the meeting, my wife and I went home and I felt a mix of anger and sadness. I felt like no matter what I did, it would never be enough for them. My wife suggested we take a step back from my family for a while to focus on our own mental health. I agreed, but it was easier said than done. A few days later, my mom called again, this time to say she wanted to come over to our place to talk. I was hesitant, but agreed. When she arrived, she seemed calmer. She said she'd been thinking about our conversation and realized that maybe she'd been too hard on me. She apologized for making me feel like I was never enough. It was the first time I had ever heard her apologize for anything. We talked for a long time, and I explained how her actions had affected me over the years. She listened, really listened, for the first time. It felt like a breakthrough. She admitted that she had her own issues and that she projected them onto me. It was a lot to take in, but it felt like we were finally making progress. In the days that followed, my mom made an effort to show that she was trying to change. She called just to check in, without any hidden agenda. She even invited us over for dinner, and it was a pleasant evening without any drama. It felt like a weight had been lifted off my shoulders. However, my sister was still distant. She didn't seem to believe that my mom and I could change our relationship. I reached out to her, but she was cold and dismissive. It hurt, but I knew I couldn't force her to see things differently. I decided to give her space and hope that in time, she would come around. Meanwhile, my wife and I focused on our own relationship. We talked about how we could support each other better, 
and make sure we didn't fall into the same patterns as my family. It brought us closer together, and I felt more grateful for her than ever. One night as we were talking, my wife shared something that surprised me. She said that she had always felt a bit intimidated by my mom and sister, and that she often felt like she had to prove herself to them. It broke my heart to hear that she had been feeling this way. I promised her that I would always put her first, and that we would face any challenges together. A week later, my mom called again, this time to invite us to a family barbecue. She said she wanted to start fresh and create new, positive memories. My wife and I agreed to go, and it turned out to be a great day. My mom was genuinely kind and appreciative, and for the first time in a long time, I felt hopeful about our relationship. As for my sister, she eventually reached out. She said she needed time to process everything, and that she was willing to try to rebuild our relationship. It was a small step, but it meant a lot to me. Looking back, I realized that my mom's behavior was rooted in her own insecurities and need for control. She had always felt unappreciated in her own life and projected that onto me. Understanding this didn't excuse her actions, but it helped me see her in a different light. My wife and I continued to work on our relationship, making sure we communicated openly and supported each other. We also set boundaries with my family, making it clear that we needed space and respect. In the end, the situation forced me to make a hard choice, to either cut my family off or try to rebuild our relationships with clear boundaries. I chose the latter, and while it wasn't easy, it led to a positive outcome. My mom and I are still working on our relationship, but it's better than it has ever been. My sister and I are slowly reconnecting, and my wife and I are stronger than ever. Thanks for reading. If you like this video, you'll probably like these too. Also, while you're here, please consider subscribing. It's your support that keeps this channel alive and allows me to make better and longer videos. Have a great day.